Behold, the basic setup guide for PCSX2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the PlayStation 2 emulator, PCSX2. This video is not intended to be a comprehensive overview, but rather to help you get up and running so you can follow along on any of my other game-specific videos. If you want a more detailed, comprehensive tutorial, I do have one on my Patreon, but I'll also be posting many of the tips and tricks on here over time if you just want to wait. The first thing that we need to do is make sure we have a file archiver or compression tool. This part's pretty easy. You either need to download and install 7-Zip or WinRAR. 7-Zip can be found at 7-Zip.org or WinRAR can be found at win-rar.com. If you do get WinRAR, it is going to try to get you to buy it. You don't need to buy it. You can do everything you need with the free trial. And next, to get the actual emulator itself. Next, this is pretty easy. To grab the emulator, head to pcsx2.net. You can download either the latest stable version or the latest nightly version. Either way, download the version that is appropriate for your platform. And after that, you're gonna need a BIOS file. Now, I can't tell you where to get a BIOS file, but it's really not hard. You might just want to Google it. But anyway, once you have a BIOS file, you're just going to come in a zip folder. Then you're going to have your PCSX2 emulator also in a zip folder. This is why we had to download our file archiver. Either one of these, you're going to right click. You're going to go down to that option and you want to check the option to extract it to its own folder. So here I'm going to extract the PS2 emulator to a PCSX2 folder. And now we see I have my PCSX2 folder here and I'm going going to extract my BIOS file to a BIOS folder. And now I have my PS2 BIOS all in here and my PCSX2 all in here. All right, next we're gonna do the initial setup of PCSX2. Open your PCSX2 folder and scroll down and double click the PCSX2-QT. Now, when you first boot it up, you're not gonna see any games. That's because PCSX2 will probably be looking in the wrong place for your game. You can see where it's looking by going to settings, games list, and under search directory, it will tell you where it's looking for games. To change that, you can add a directory here and pick your folder, or you can go to settings, add game directory, and do the same thing here. Now the next thing you have to do before you can play any games is get a BIOS file. Go to settings, BIOS, and it's going to tell you where PCSX2 is looking for the BIOS files. By default, it's going to be under documents. I've changed it to a custom folder just for organizational purposes. So you can see where to put it here and you can also pick a custom folder and place your BIOS in there. Once that's done, that is the basic setup and you're ready to start tinkering with your game settings. All right, before we can play a game, we have to have a controller to control it. Go to settings, controllers, which will pop up this screen. Most of the time, enabling SDL input source will work for most controllers. But if you're using a DualShock controller, check DualShock 4. And if you're using an older Xbox 3, Xbox One, Xbox Series controller, enable X input. And if you're using a really old controller, you're gonna wanna enable D input. Most of the time, having SDL input source enabled is going to be good enough to configure your controller, go down to controller port one. And this first option that says DualShock 2, this drop down gives you options to choose which type of controller you'd like to emulate. You could pick the guitar, you could pick the JogCon, the NeoCon, but for 99.99% of games, you're gonna wanna emulate the DualShock 2. Now, if you're using a newer controller that's SDL, you can just check automatic mapping and it's gonna map it most likely correctly. But if you wanna map anything specific or game specific, then you just click the up button here and I press up on my d-pad and if I see it switch that means my controller is detected and the mapping has been completed if I pick left and press left on my d-pad you'll see that come up and you can manually go through and pick each one and that's it before we play a game we might want to adjust the visuals so we'll get into graphics settings All 
All right, let's go over some basic graphics settings. To access this, go to settings, graphics, and it will pop up this window. The first thing we're gonna look at is the renderer. Most people can just set this to automatic default. This will just detect your video card and pick the correct one. If you have a more modern video card and you wanna get more into the weeds, generally speaking, I use Vulkan most of the time. So for most people, just put automatic. For the adapter, pick defaults, or you can pick your video card if you have multiple video cards. Full screen mode, always borderless full screen. Aspect ratio, for the most part, you wanna set it to fit to window full screen. FMV aspect ratio override, I'll leave off. De-interlacing automatic. Bilinear filtering, I choose sharp. If you switch it to smooth, you'll notice that the image is a little bit blurrier, or you can go to none, and it's extra pixelated, which won't really matter when we change the internal resolution. So I think either of these work. And then I almost always check apply widescreen patches. If you set your aspect ratio to fit window full screen and the image seems stretched, first check apply widescreen patches. If that doesn't work, check that the actual game options have a widescreen option. For example, God of War 2 has a native widescreen option. So when I check apply widescreen patches, nothing happens. But the other 90% of games check this so that you don't have a stretched image. The next tab we'll go over is the rendering tab. The first option is internal resolution. You can set your resolution to intervals of the native base resolution. If you want to go to around 1080p, you want to do 3x native resolution, and you can go all the way up to 12x for approximately 8k. Pick what your monitor supports plus what your GPU can handle. Now, if you have a powerful GPU, you can super sample. I have a 4k monitor, but I like to check it to 5k because I want to run the resolution slightly higher than my monitor supports, which is often referred to as super sampling and can produce a slightly clearer image than traditional anti-aliasing methods. The next thing you want to check is texture filtering. Almost all the time, I leave this to PS2. Trilinear filtering, almost always leave to default. Anastropic filtering, almost always put at 16x. Dithering, I usually put at default, but for this game, I have it on scaled. And blending accuracy, this is very demanding of your GPU. So basic or medium is what I generally recommend. And then the last thing we could look at is texture replacement. I'm not going to go over how to set this up. I will cover texture packs in a separate video, but this is where you can check load textures and the game will load custom textures. And that is it for your basic graphic options. The two most important things, in my opinion, are your internal resolution and your blending accuracy. This is going to impact the image the most, and it's also the two things that are going to impact the performance the most. And with that, now you can play a game, but you also want to be able to save a game. So we're going to get into setting up your memory cards. All right, to set up your memory cards, it's pretty easy. On this same menu, go from graphics to memory cards, and under slot one, you'll see your memory card loaded, and under slot two. Now, I already have some loaded, but if you want to make new ones, check create, and you can pick from eight megabytes, which is considered the most compatible, all the way to 32. I actually recommend 32 megabyte because as it says here, most third-party memory cards, and it should work with most games, and you can save more stuff. So you're gonna check 32 megabytes, give it a name, okay, create that. Once that's done, if you want to switch it to either of your slots, you right click it and you can say use for slot one or use for slot two. And that's it. And the last thing I like to set up before I actually start playing a game is my hotkeys. All right, to set up your hotkeys, which will come in very useful, go to settings, surprise, surprise, go to hotkeys. And I'm just gonna go over the ones that I have found to be the most useful. Pause, I set to space. Full screen, I set it to alt return because that's standard for most other apps. Fast forward, I set to tab and you can customize the speed and I'll get to that in my other more advanced setting videos. And slow motion, I set to caps lock. The only other ones that I change for my personal taste, my save state. So save Save state is usually by default F1 and 2, but F1 and 2 often get used by other programs. So if you're running anything on top of it, like reshade or lossless scaling, you can have some conflicting uh, shortcut keys. And it's easier to remember. So I map my save to S for save. And I map my load to L for load. And it's very easy to remember. There's many, many options in here and you can map all sorts of different things. This is an area where everyone is going to have their own personal preference. So it's most important that you're just aware that this hotkey section exists and that you can map things to your personal preference. Thank you. 
This should get the basics up and running so you can play almost any game on PCSX2. If you're interested in more advanced tips, you can check out my Patreon or my members only Discord. Or honestly, you could just look up stuff on YouTube like texture replacement, uh, 60 FPS patches, reshade injection, so on and so forth. Plus, I'm probably going to end up posting that stuff on my YouTube eventually anyway. It's just that members get earlier access to it. And remember to share the good news of the gaming gospel and ye shall be blessed. I say these things in the name of me and Mother, the Father, the Coach, and the Son, and Carmack, the Holy Ghost. Amen, and enjoy the games.